At first glance, Monster Pie seems to have the most cliched setup in the world. Two high school boys, both in the closet, who have to work together on the Romeo and Juliet project, of all things. Hello everybody, I'm Dylan and alright, we've had a couple of goofy films in the last reviews. Now we're gonna take a look at something a little more grounded. Today's film is Monster Pies, an Australian film released in 2013. It was written and directed by Lee Galea, which is actually based on an adaptation of a short story he wrote in 1995 when he was just 15 years old. It was produced by Babalu Studios, Lime Street Entertainment and Indie Melbourne Production. This film was made on a budget of $30,000 in Australian money, of course. So do we have an indie treasure or an indie flop on our hands? Let's take a look. So as the film begins, we are introduced to Mike, a typical high school teenager played by Tristan Barr. Hmm, Barr. Nope, there's no connection. We see him cross some students, some of them call him names, the F word in particular. In his class, he meets new guy William, played by Lucas Lineham. William seems like your typical tough, hard-shelled, a bit macho type guy who doesn't know he's gay yet. Possibly neither of these boys know yet. They must work on a Romeo and Juliet assignment, which forces them to spend some time together. Mike is intrigued right off the bat at William. Both of these boys come from broken homes. Mike lives with his mom, he sees his dad occasionally, but his dad has a new life and family so Mike feels left out in a way. William lives with his dad, a semi-abusive man who displays homophobic behaviors towards his son. We also meet William's mom, a very quiet lady who has suffered brain injury and speaks very little. We often see William with a video camera and loves to film different things. As Mike and William spend more time together, Mike eventually gives Will a kiss, which surprises William and he leaves the scene. But soon both boys realize they like each other and spend whatever time they can in the closet without family or their school knowing. It isn't always easy since there's a girl who likes Mike and is very forward with him. So Mike and Will have their ups and downs, like we like each other but we can't be together, blah blah blah. Mike wants to go to the dance with William as a couple, but Will doesn't like that idea. But they see each other at the dance and eventually do dance together, in a private secluded spot. But more problems arise when William has another fight with his homophobic dad, and Mike's mom isn't thrilled about the revelation of his homosexuality either. More goes on from there, but that's Monster Pies in a nutshell. So the main theme in this film is first love. Both our protagonists feel this for the first time. I always like these stories of first love. There's kinda nothing like your first love. And your first heartbreak for those of you unfortunate enough to have experienced that, which I assume is almost everyone. A secondary theme is coming out and self-acceptance. Both our protagonists struggle with this, but it seems to weigh heavier on William's shoulders, maybe due to his homophobic father. Mike seemed more ready to come out when the time is right. Finally, we have the theme of tragedy. There is one thing I didn't like in this film and I'll discuss it more in a spoiler section later in this video. So at first glance, Monster Pie seems to have the most cliched setup in the world. Two high school boys, both in the closet, who have to work together on the Romeo and Juliet project of all things, and fall in love by spending time together. But in spite of its very basic setup and some wooden acting at times, Monster Pies still manages to be engaging. You kind of follow these characters on their little journey and I was never bored throughout the film. We like these characters enough to get emotionally invested in them and they can successfully pull on your heartstrings. This film does have a bit of that low budget feel and acting ranging from good to slightly cheesy in some spots. I'll admit some of Mike's or William's freakouts made me laugh a bit. They just seem to be so dramatic. I assume the freakout was filmed separately from the chronological event that occurred before it, but still a couple of the freakouts weren't super convincing and seemed over the top, like a kid throwing a tantrum. In low budget indie films, sometimes these shortcomings can either be detrimental or beneficial. It can be detrimental in the sense that it can break the immersion, if you chuckle at a supposed to be dramatic scene for example, but it can be beneficial by adding its own charm and flavor to the film. In the case of this film, I think the little shortcomings work to its benefits. It kinda adds its extra charm, and we like these actors anyway even if the acting isn't always perfect. A lot of scenes do work, when they talk about their lives or reveal personal information, it's well done. 
Alright, I'm gonna go into a spoiler section here. I normally try to avoid giving too many spoilers, but sometimes there is something I want to talk about that I can't because, well, it's a spoiler. So if you'd like to see this film and don't want to be spoiled, either stop the video now or jump to the time shown on screen. Ready? Alright. So near the end of the film, William has a heated fight with his dad and leaves the house. Him and Mike are confused about what to do and where to go. They go to this tree and kinda cuddle which is actually a pretty cute heartwarming scene in the film. But then, we see Mike wake up in the morning and we see William's feet dangling, presumably he hung himself during the night. I find it's the little things that sometimes take me out of a film. I was thinking, what the hell? This raised too many questions for me. They fell asleep while sitting and cuddling under the tree. So first of all, how did William leave the cuddling position without Mike waking up? Where did he find rope to hang himself, if it even was rope? So he was able to leave Mike at the tree, get rope or something to hang himself, then most likely climb the tree to set this all up and then perform the act? And none of this woke Mike up or wasn't seen by anyone passing by? If they really wanted to have William commit suicide for the sake of the story, I think they should have come up with something else. Instead of just having him dangling in front of Mike. Is that what he really wanted? I mean, how cruel can you be? Also, throughout the film, we don't have any indication that William is suicidal. He's a bit hard-shelled at first and has a lousy dad, but he often visited his mom in the hospital and a younger girl with Down syndrome. This suicide came unrealistically out of the blue for me. I know teenagers can do some crazy things at times, but even those who commit suicide don't usually do it on a whim. Oftentimes, they've been suffering for a while or whatever. Something has been progressing in their mental state to build up to that unfortunate action. I just didn't buy William's suicide in this manner. There's always been a negative stigma about gay love stories, that they always end in tragedy. Not just gay love stories, but I think a lot of just love stories or drama in general. The belief is that viewers will remember the film more if tragedy happens, it will have more impact. Drama, damn it, we need drama! While that's probably true, I myself am a little harder to fool. You can't just put a shocking ending that comes out of left field to me. There's a difference between, oh this is really sad, and oh you're trying too hard to depress me. A movie like Prayers for Bobby was great because the tragedy was more logical. Okay, maybe this is a bad example because this is based on a true story. But we saw Bobby's struggles and the lead up to his suicide made sense, as sad as it is. We then saw the aftermath of his family coping. To be fair, Monster Pies does have a good aftermath, with Mike grieving and visiting Will's mom and the little girl with Down Syndrome in place of Will. Monster Pies is a much smaller production, but the suicide just didn't work for me, or at least not in the manner it was presented here. And this comment isn't just aimed at Monster Pies, but a lot of gay themed films suffer from this trope, the suicide trope, the tragedy trope. Alright, sorry everyone, I guess I went on a little rant there. It's not to say that this film is bad, not at all. IMDb has a rating of 6.7 for this film. It is not rated on Rotten Tomatoes. I did see some positive reviews and people who say they cried at this film, so it did touch some people. I give Monster Pies a 7.5 out of 10. In spite of my criticism, I still think it's a pretty decent indie film. Even with its simple premise and good to average acting, the film still maintains your attention and you still root for these characters. So not bad for a film based on a short story written by someone when they were a teenager. Since I got on the topic of drama and tragedy, do you guys want to do a little fantasy writing with me? You guys remember Love, Simon, right? The charming story about a closeted teenager who starts emailing another closeted teenager and they meet at the end of the film? Well, let's imagine that Martin, the villain of the film, exposes both Simon and Blue, and Blue is so stricken with grief that he decides to commit suicide, and then Simon falls into depression and loses all of his friends and gets bullied. He's so pissed at Martin that he decides to look up how to make homemade bombs and he wants to stash them at the next school dance. He does this, but then he has a change of heart and decides to go to the dance to disarm the bombs, but then one blows up and Simon dies. <laughs> How's that for drama? Wouldn't that be an exaggerated, over-the-top, desperate attempt at making your viewers feel bad? Well, people, guess what? That film that I described just now actually exists! And I'll review it next episode. So send in your comments, like this video, subscribe, add me to Facebook, and I'll hopefully see you for the next review.